Set us on fire, oh God. Rat the band on the tossu sukapa. A shana man the lagade. Oh, rat the band on the bragade. A suna man the laga bragade. A rat as a susukabondo. A letter shed a bar. 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 A rat the band on the kata. Somebody pray from the depth of your heart. Pray in the spirit. Esopelia, 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 Esopel
Come on, somebody pray some more. Pray some more. Take it a notch higher with some more intensity, with some more desire, with some more intensity, with some more desire. The Lord is doing the work on the altar of your heart. The Lord is doing the work in our spirit. As we pray, things are changing. As we pray, things are changing. As we pray, somebody is shedding skills. As we pray, somebody is shedding skills. As we pray, Somebody is seeing visions. Come on, pray some more. Pray some more. Let the parana mande eso papa. Let the sebrana eti alata kope ishi atomamba elata kwapa eradanda eradanda eroya ya 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 eroya ya 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 eroata na na manda esete peya eshwata na iso penda iso penda iso penda iso penda iso penda Lord we are here. A rada bana te, erwa te pa, esse pa ya, esse pa ya, esse pa ya, esse pa ya, esse pa ya. No one is living here without a touch of God's fire. Come on, somebody, pray some more, pray some more, pray some more with some more intensity. A rada bana te, esse pa na ya, esse te bene na, a ta rada tuante. If 
I were you, I would pray some more with some more intensity, with some more intensity. The effectual, heartfelt prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. If I were you, I would pray with some more intensity. God is doing a work in this place. God is doing a work in your life. Come on, pray some more. 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 Arata balata da, esete kopa lata, shadi lano, shadi lano ya, ete kaparata, eleti ano sa, erete de de da ya, ekwa banana, ekwa banana ya, erete bana, esopa, 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 ayate flemende, arata da da, esopa banana, elete zusa, elado. So Parian Amanda Aratina Nakoba and Comprata Zefe Arate Brante. You have come to meet the Lord. You have come to meet the Lord of hosts, and the Lord is ready for you. Somebody pray like your life depends on it. Arte Sofle Yata Kapalamanda Aratia Tati. Iswa kapena, eshe balada, etia na nanda, eka frate, elada susa, ele kuabanda, ele kuabanda, aya, ete tia na nando, erete kabaya. Somebody is shedding skills. Somebody is changing levels. Arada da balada bande, erada piata, erada piata, erada piata. Woo. Shapala mete, e fratanda, e rete kopala namanda, e so so so, a frapanda, e ratata daba, e ruate ne mende, a ratapa, a ratapa, a ratapa ya, a daga balamande, e te si e namanda, e le da koratama, e kuapana, e riadanda, e so so so, e so so so, e so 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 ya, a tanda daya, a ratata mama.
Rabana, and the Dosusa, and she and Amanda, and the Kofra Banda, and the Setana, and Radana, and Quate, 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 and Shababaya, and Tata, and Tetena, and Copa Pana, and Coca Pana, and Tiatonda, and Radeno. Iyo akwada, iyo akwada, iyo akwada, iyo akwada. Etendi na nonda, erete kobala, esasa, esasa, esasa ya, 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 esasa Sobaya Epera Namana Gabo, Eshatele, Le Quapranda, Esetenemende, Ela Quapapa, Etedua, Etedua, Etedwande, Eshatekeba, Aradanamanda, Elete Kofra, Yateka, somebody, you have two minutes more, La Quapanda, pray from the depth of your heart with everything you got. Rejoice, Petra Lagos, rejoice. Come on, rejoice. Come on, rejoice. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Please have your seat in God's presence, and we are still praying. We are going to be rising up to pray as well. I want you to come to someone by your side and tell them this is the nickname your life changed. Come on, say it like you mean it. This is the nickname your life changed. And believe me when I tell, tell you that you have not been to a meeting like this before. All right? You have not been to a meeting like this before. Book of Psalms, chapter 107, verse 8 to 9. Psalms 107, verse 8 to 9. Pray, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfied the longing soul and filled the hungry soul with goodness. Amen. So please jump up on your feet this afternoon. And let's pray. Please rise as we pray this afternoon. Hallelujah. And with all faith in your heart, with all power, all gospel, I want you to declare with me and say, Father, Father, thank you for King Lagos. Thank you because lives will be changed today. Thank you because as your servant, Pastor Aya Jani ministers today, there will be definite encounters 
with your word and spirit in the lives of all present, both online and on site. Thank you because your fire will be kindled on the altar of our hearts. And no one will live here the same way they came. Do you believe those words? And I want to begin to give God thanks for what he has accomplished in your lives in this service. Lift up your voice this afternoon and begin to give God thanks intentionally. Thank him for King Du Lagos. Thank him because tonight, this afternoon, your life will be changed. Thank you because lives will be changed today in the name of Jesus. And Father, we say thank you because today, today by reason of this meeting, lives will be changed now. Lives will be radically transformed in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because no one that stepped foot into this meeting, no one who joins us online will remain the same because our lives will be radically transformed. Lift up your voice and begin to give God thanks. Give God thanks because this meeting is your meeting. And say to yourself that this meeting is my meeting. My life will be changed. My life will be transformed. There will be a complete turnaround by reason of King Lagos in the name of Jesus.
cannot try her. Knowing that uh, you are not living here the same way, give God thanks. Uh, knowing that your life should be touched, your life should be changed, uh, your life should be transformed. Uh. That you are not living here the same way. Give God thanks intentionally, knowing that your lives are uh, will be radically transformed uh, today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you all the praise. Thank you for tonight. It's a night. This meeting is a meeting. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Because as the word comes to us through your servants, we are not living here the same way we came. Our lives will be radically transformed in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, if you believe that, give God a big shout of praise. Hallelujah. You can have a sister blessing. Glory to God. We're still praying. It's Kindle. Right? It's Kindle. Amen. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 4. The Bible says, God also bearing to pray. Praise God. So there is no getting tired. We are just starting. Praise God. We just started. Hallelujah. Say, Father, we ask that there be an abundant supply of your spirit in this service. We declare that there is an avalanche of signs, wonders, miracles, and deliverances today. We decree and declare that there is a distribution of the spirit into the lives of all present and no need no need will escape the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus name open your mouth and pray Father in the name of Jesus we're asking for an abundant supply of the spirit today an abundant supply of the spirit in this service 
In the name of Jesus, we declare an avalanche of signs, wonders, and miracles. In the name of Jesus, a move of the Holy Ghost today. In this service, in the name of Jesus, that the Spirit of God will move on every heart, will move on every life. In the name of Jesus, that the Spirit of God will move on every situation today. In the name of Jesus, comente para tenemonga para denamaya o deskenemen tom berade ante kienen tom kanda para da bande o de kiena mashande that every one of us today will encounter the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Lo mante kiena mundo o breve tene con delire e de comba de mashande de barade ande renon con breve nide anto con soba ele makapatene onde rakata la mande rianda Father we pray for distribution of all of your might today over the here pray like someone that is ready to encounter the Lord open your mouth and pray don peke and don de cameron de kia and de cameron toda mande retonde ah shana mande de shana mande de di kata kama e de barato conde antela da bande anto conde bradida ate kede ele motora ele motora mende anta kama ramana mana 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 maya ante koto la mandi enta oh somande and we declare tonight that no need will escape the touch of the spirit in the name of jesus over the kian aliendo ramande combre bedine oh sabada baya and everyone who live full of the holy ghost in the name of jesus feel to overflowing in the name of jesus sobata kaya ah the kada namaya ambera donta kada da mashanda la namaya ramma kama takina mamborondo odo borodo borodo boshanda da baya andere kada da bos sia mantela mondo o sabada ba sada ba da ba e raboto konde la da mashande sabada ba da kantene a sombe de kia tamande Seba katara mande Roma kotolo mondo Sobate Sobate O me kande nire Shana manto koma rata Ate kena monto para Ate kada baya Ate kada baya Come on press harder Press harder Push in the spirit Press on Press in today Press in today Press in today Makata maye Ibarra bata kada damaya, ando soba de, ando soba de, ando soba de. Era bata kanda li ander era bashande, era bakonte shada mande de bahara, ando se, ando ro sombe de, ando ro sombe de. Ibarra bata konde, soba de bata baya, andera de kuta damad, era bata kona ma. Eda makotona me, eda makotona manda. Sabata kaya, sabata kana mande. Soba de dia prabata, ashena manto konde. Rabanda kiende, rabaka tiende. Rato mante she, ibarata ka. Adena sota ke, ara bado basha. Tonight is your night, today is your day, your day of an encounter. It is your day. It is your time. It is your time. Come on, prepare your heart. Prepare to receive from the Lord. Prepare to receive from the Lord. Prepare today. Prepare today. I take on the Monday. So far the bar. Era matora me. Ande contene. Andora. 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 Andora stoba radidi, 
Ando soba rabade, ida bakata mina, ando skoba takia, alama. Oh, ila hande hera no shadabaya. Oh, ima rada konde liande, mara tombe ronde, mara tombe rondo. Oh, breve di kandi ande rabashanda ya. Oh, mara takia na manto mara dina, soba rabaya. Sabada kabada bara ba, oh sabada bara ba de. Ida man tom re vede kia, ida baro ba konto ba re vidia. Andoresto, andoresto, andoro ba la ba sha. Ante kete la manda. We are ready for an encounter. We are ready for a visitation. Hey ma kamanda, oh ba la ba shanda. Siya na ba te konto na ma. Antora badaba, antora ni ente makara. Shere me no para te kina mande, o breve te kina mande. Se ba to konde la maya, i ba ro ba to konde li ende. Shada badaba da ba, antora me ne li ende. Oh sabada kana ma. Oh today there will be signs, wonders and miracles. Today there will be signs, wonders and miracles. Today there will be a move of the Holy Ghost. Today there will be deliverances. Today the Holy Ghost will move in the auditorium. Today we will encounter the Lord. Today he man to counter fire. Arono counter baraban de diente. Shada baraban. Oh hallelujah. Father we give you praise. Father we give you praise. We thank you for Kinder Lagos. Father, we are ready to receive. We are ready to receive today, Lord. We are ready to receive a great supply of the Holy Ghost today. Father, we give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. You can have your sister. God bless you. the wells of salvation. Are we ready to draw this afternoon? Come on, give Jesus a praise. Come on. Can you look for your neighbor real quick? Say, neighbor. Say, my God is good. Come on, say it like you mean it. Say, neighbor. My God is good and his mercy towards me endures forever. Come on, you can add a clap to it right now. Come on. Woo. Come on. Out of clock, come on. One more time, oh yeah, yeah. Glory to Jesus. And Lord, you are good, say, Lord, you are good and your mercy. Real simple song. And Lord, you are good, good, good. Yep. So Lord, you are good, yeah. Can we say it one more time? And Lord, you were so good. Yeah. Can we raise it up the sun? And people from every, people from every, come on, from generation to generation. We were, come on, put your hands together, come on.
set me free. Jesus, my Lord, look what you've done for me. I am. And I haven't been the same ever since the day I called your name. Yahweh's away. Hey, look what you've done to me. Look what you've done.
Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. You can have a seat. God bless you. Who is feeling the heat? Who is feeling the heat of the Holy Ghost? Praise the Lord. We're going to be praying again. We came for kindle. You must be kindled today. Come on, you must be kindled. Hallelujah. We're going to be praying the Holy Ghost. There's a particular scripture that God's servant always reads to us. God's servant always tells us this verse. Luke, Leviticus chapter 6, verse 13. The fire must be kept burning on the altar continuously. It must not go out. Hallelujah. The fire must be kept burning on the altar continuously. It must not go out. Let us rise up to pray. It is the work of the Lord to kindle a fire in you. Praise God. For some of you, your fire may have gone out, but tonight, the Lord will encounter you, and that fire will be kindled again. And for those of you whose fire is burning, you will be fanning the flame again tonight. Hallelujah. Let us begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. 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 Open your mouth and pray. You are going to pray passionately tonight. You are not going to pray like every other person. You want the fire of God to be kindled on the altar of your heart today. Pray like someone that needs the fire to be kindled today. Open your mouth and pray. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Fan the flames today. Fan the flames. I will not leave lukewarm. I will not leave cold. The fire of God will be kindled on my heart today.
Say, Jesus, Jesus, our true desire, we fix our eyes. You've called us out of darkness into your marvelous light, marvelous light. Gave us hope when it felt there would never be any more hope, Lord. Oh, and we saw your mouth. Oh, now we're leaving in your mouth, Lord. Oh, Jesus, 
You call us out of darkness into your marvelous, your marvelous, and you gave us all when it felt there would be no more hope. And Lord, we saw your marvelous, we saw your marvelous, hey, Jesus.
sunshine. Go ahead and just bless him. Give him praise and thank him. Worship him. Forever my song will be Jesus your beauty and thank him. Worship him, adore him. Bless him and thank him. My beloved is the most beautiful amongst thousands in thousands my Amongst thousands and thousands, my beloved is the most beautiful. Amongst thousands and thousands, oh, my beloved is the My beloved, my beloved is the most beautiful amongst thousands and thousands. My beloved is the most beautiful. your hands and bless him. Worship the Lord. Tonight is a special night. Tonight is a special night. Tonight is a special night. Go ahead, reverence the Lord, worship him. Give him praise and thank him. Give him praise and bless him. Give him praise and worship him all over the room. Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord tonight. Give him praise tonight. Yes, the glory of the Lord is in the room tonight. The glory of the Lord is in the room tonight. The Lord is here. The Lord is here, the Lord is here, the Lord is here, the Lord is here. Give him praise and thank him. Worship him and adore him. Give him praise. Give him praise and thank him. Bless him and worship him. Thank you for your love. 
Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. We bless you. We worship you. three more times.
tu es qui notre vie Spirit being accomplished in your heart. Give him praise and thank him. Worship him. Bless him. Give him praise. The presence of the Lord is here so strong. The glory of the Lord is here amongst us. The Lord is here to do you good. The Lord is here to bless you. The Lord is here to bless you. Give him praise and thank him. The Lord is kindling a fresh fire. The Lord is kindling a fresh fire on the altar of your heart. Give him praise and thank him. Precious Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Baron de Gesila Atron Jaladigos Ke Prahan de la Kiaste. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for tonight will never be forgotten. Thank you for your presence, your glory amongst us. Thank you for that which you are set to do in our lives. We give you praise and we bless you. Thank you for hearing ears. Thank you for seeing eyes. Thank you for utterance. Thank you for grace. We give you praise and we thank you. Blessed be your holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hey, are you glad you're here this evening? Yes, sir. There are meetings and there are meetings. Tell the person beside you, this is that meeting. Tell the person beside you, this is that meeting. This is that meeting. Tell the person, I'm glad you came. I'm glad you're here. Are you ready to receive from the Lord? Brother Hagen said that uh, many times we're not able to receive the best from God because we don't define the purpose of the meeting. Um, you're having a prayer meeting, a one-hour prayer meeting, and then 50 minutes is spent teaching the word. That's not a prayer meeting. So 
different meetings with different reasons why the Lord calls for these meetings. Tonight's meeting is a special one. Uh, whilst we will teach, we will worship, and we're going to spend a lot of time worshiping the Lord, praying, and all of the rest. The most important thing that will happen to you is an encounter with the Lord Jesus. That's the most important thing that will happen to you. Glory to God. But I do know that the Lord can only do as much as you're hungry for. I know he's only going to do as much as you're thirsty for. The Holy Spirit is the perfect gentleman. Perfect. When you say perfect gentleman, perfect. He will never push beyond what you allow. He's the perfect gentleman. Perfect. He said, my spirit will never strive with them. He's the perfect gentleman. So get hungry tonight. For everything changes tonight. Hallelujah. Come and give three people around you a high five and tell them you're welcome. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. And please, you may be seated. Glory to God. We're going to have a... It's good to see all the ministers of the gospel in the house. God bless you, sirs. Thank you for joining us. Um, let's put our hands together and please appreciate every minister of the gospel that's joined us today. And it's good to have um, Minister Moses Ako with us today. Glory to God. All right, so we're going to have sessions of the word. We're going to have sessions to pray. And um, we're going to have sessions to worship as well. All right, so um, it's going to be an immersion in the spirit, praise God. And I realize that the, a lot of people um, like the quick fix. Just quickly, quickly, quickly. Give me a quick word. Let me get going. But we're here to immerse ourselves, right? And to receive all that the Lord has for us. Genesis chapter 6, let's start from there. Genesis chapter 6. Glory to God. Taking your place in the priesthood. Taking your place in the priesthood. There is a move of God in Nigeria today, and it's beautiful. It's beautiful to see what the Lord is doing. Beautiful to see people being influenced, um, you know, God doing great and mighty things. Um, in the country and um, around the nations of the earth through Nigerians. And we're grateful to God to see what the Lord is doing. But one of the things I've realized is this, is um, every move of God has to be stewarded with proper teaching. Every move of God has to be stewarded with proper teaching. And it's important we know what God is doing, how to connect with what the Lord is doing, how to take advantage of what the Lord is doing. Glory to God. The priesthood is the most important discipline of the believer. The priesthood is the most important discipline of the believer. The priesthood. I'd like to come down because that's where I'm going to end. Since God calls the end from the beginning, I might as well. No, just, just leave it. That's the most important discipline of the believer, the priesthood. And um, it is easy for us to assume that we know what it means, particularly in a generation of sound bites and um, YouTube clips here and there. We have an idea. This is what it means when we talk about the priesthood and all of that. Um, but that's not how you know. You know by studying. You know by teaching. Are you following what I'm saying here? Um, line upon line, precept upon precept, a little here and a little there. Glory to God. Um, no church is stronger than the number of priests that have been raised. No church is truly stronger than the number of people who have taken their place in the priesthood. And so you hear people say things like, but there are lots of people in the church in Nigeria how come the nation is not changing? Have you heard people say things like that? There are lots of people. The church has large numbers. How come it would seem as though the nation is not changing? Um, I believe that one major aspect, one major part to this is understanding our priesthood and taking our place in the priesthood. 
in Genesis chapter 6 and the 8th verse, I want us to see something there. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 8. It talks about Noah, and the Bible says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the first time the word grace is used all through scriptures. It says, Noah found grace. Where? In the eyes of the Lord. Now, this is Easter season, so you know why he found grace? Because he was a pure stock. The Bible tells us he was pure stock, and so um, the daughters of men had corrupted themselves with angels, fallen angels, and all of the rest. But Noah was pure stock, and so God had to preserve the pure stock so that the Christ could come from a pure stock. And then the Bible says, Noah, in verse 9, these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. You have to underline that to understand um, what he means when he says he was just. He was perfect in his generations, and Noah worked with God. But what I want you to see there is the previous verse. It says, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Bible students will tell you that the first place a thing is mentioned will tell you a lot about that thing. Am I right? It will tell you a lot, a lot about the thing. Um, 90% of what you should know about the subject is within that verse, the first place it's mentioned. So he says, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Am I right? We know what happened with Noah. He built an ark to the saving of his family and to the judgment of the world. And then in chapter 8, the Bible tells us that when Noah came out of the ark, having found grace in the sight of the Lord, what was the first thing Noah did? Noah built an altar unto the Lord to offer sacrifices. Now, the presumption here or the assumption here is this, is you don't talk about altars if you're not talking about priests. It's not possible. It's not possible. Mechanics don't use stethoscopes. Am I right? If you find, <laughs> if you find your auto uh, mechanic with a stethoscope on his neck, testing your battery, what are you going to do? Now, because that's not the tool of his trade. So the moment an altar is mentioned, we're talking about what? The priesthood. Are you following what I'm saying here? Now, the man who found grace was the man who built an altar. The essence of grace is to raise priests. Are you following what I'm saying here? The essence of the cross of Jesus Christ, having received grace of the Lord, is not just primarily to have a beautiful life. And um, it's, it's a wonderful thing when we serve the Lord and, you know, people tell you if you give your heart to the Lord, you get born again, then he's going to um, um, answer all your questions. He's going to heal all your diseases. How many of you heard that before? He's going to pay all your rent and clear all your debts and all the rest. And there's nothing wrong saying that. But the essence of salvation is far more than that. Far more than that. Far more than that. If we get all the good things in life and do not take our place in the priesthood, we may have just failed God. If we get all the good things. And I dare say to you, many people who parade themselves as wonderful, you know, deep people and all the rest, have very little shallow understanding of what the priesthood really refers to. I mean, how do I know? You cannot practice the priesthood and be in offense. It's just not possible. How do you worship the Lord and you're not talking to somebody? It's not possible. I, I mean, it makes no sense. You're telling me the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. Amazing. He, he, he's gone quiet. You're telling me that's possible? It's absolutely impossible. Impossible. I mean, impossible to hold a grudge against any human person if you actually practice the priesthood. It's impossible. But you can have rev. Oh, yeah, you can have rev. <laughs> it's possible to have rev and be full of offense. It's very possible. Are you following what I'm saying here? Okay, so... The priesthood is God's idea, God's vision for every believer. This is who he wants us to be. This is what he wants us to be. This is the essence of the cross. This is why Jesus came to die. Let's look at a few texts, scriptures that we all are acquainted with, and we're going to start from the known to the unknown. Glory to God. Revelations 
chapter 1 and verse 6. We all know it, Revelation chapter 1 and verse 6. Let's run to it, through it together. Hallelujah. It says, And had made us what? Kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. And everybody said what? Amen. First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2. Hallelujah. Verse 9. It says, but your chosen generation. Now, some of you are actually not reading it. You are singing. I know. <laughs> I know you're not reading this. You're singing a song in your mind. All right. It says, you're a chosen generation. A what? Royal priesthood. A holy nation. A peculiar people that should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness. Where? Into his what? Marvelous light. Beautiful. Beautiful. It says, you're a chosen generation or royal priesthood. So you study through the scriptures, and then you see that in the old dispensation, the Old Testament, there were three offices that God established through which he governed and ruled his people. The first of them, even though it wasn't explicitly mentioned, was the office of the priest. We just saw that in Noah, the priesthood. That was the first office that God established. And thereafter, we see other offices, the office of the prophet established. Now, it was never God's desire to give Israel a king. You know that, right? It was never God's desire to say, you'll have kings. It was the nation of Israel who saw other nations and they said, we want to be like these other nations. Give us a king. Now, what did God say to Samuel? Samuel said, they have rejected me. God said, no, you, they haven't rejected you. It's me they rejected. Give them a king. So God took the administrative aspect of the prophetic ministry and gave it to the king. How do we know that the prophet was still the king? Because the king feared the prophet. It was the prophet who established kings. And it was the prophet who removed kings. When Nathan the prophet came to meet David, David knew this was the end. When Samuel went to the house of Jesse, are you getting what I'm saying here? Saul was in fear of Samuel. Are you getting this here? So the kingly office, stay with me, was established out of the prophethood um, and just in a sense to give administration and order to the nation of Israel. But here's where I'm going to. Of all these offices, the most important office was the office of a priest. How do we know? Melchizedek was a priest. Abraham was a prophet. The lesser is blessed of the greater. Who blessed the other? It was Melchizedek the priest that blessed Abraham the prophet. Is somebody following what I'm saying here? Now, you know you can have expressions of um, the prophetic, which is the supernatural power of God. When you talk about power, demonstrations of power, and all of those things. For example, I come into this place now, and I tell somebody, get up from the wheelchair, and they get up from the wheelchair, and that's beautiful and all the rest. You can have demonstrations of power all within that prophetic ministry. Because the prophetic ministry is not um, Brother Sylvester here with goatee and then he says, Tossi at the Lord. No, it's far more than that. It's talking about the supernatural power of God either spoken or demonstrated. That's the prophetic ministry. Now, you can have all of that and lack the foundation of the priesthood. Because the prophethood is defined by power, the priesthood is defined by the presence. I'm going somewhere with this. The prophethood is defined by power, gifts, the anointing. So you can find somebody with gifts, with the anointing, and all of those beautiful things, demonstrations of God's power. But what defines the priestly ministry is the presence of God. That's what defines the priestly ministry. And you see in a bit why this is important. Because it's the presence that sanctifies is the presence that preserves. It is the reason somebody can function in power and be living in immorality. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Because there are two different offices. Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? It's the reason why Saul can prophesy all night long and continue on his murderous quest the next morning. That's the reason. He can prophesy naked all night long. And everybody said, what kind of man is this? Has he joined the prophet? And the next morning, he takes his javelin ready to kill somebody. How do you prophesy all night long and become a murderer in the morning? Because gifts don't sanctify. The anointing is not what builds you. It's the presence that builds you. 
Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? And at the core of the believer's journey is a call into the priesthood. I'm just going to lay foundation in this first session. Um, I'm just going to lay foundation here so you get um, just the, the scope of what the Lord wants us to have. And then we get into some um, um, more beautiful, precious thoughts as we continue here. And so God said to um, the nation of Israel, he said his desire was that they were going to be a nation of priests. Have you ever read that before? He said that was his desire. He wanted every single one of them, not just the Levites, not just Aaron and his sons. He wanted the whole nation to be a nation of priests. Now, we do know that he's fulfilled that in Jesus Christ. Today, because of the sacrifice and the obedience of Christ, all of us have become priests unto God. But then he tells you this is what God had desired all the while. When he looked at Israel, what he wanted to see were priests, not kings. Now, don't get me wrong. If you actually stand strong in your priesthood, to stand as a king won't be difficult. God's desire is that every single one child of this actually takes their place in the priesthood. <laughs> now, I'm going to show you today what it exactly means when we talk about taking your place in the priesthood. Exodus 19 there, let's look at it. Exodus chapter 19. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 5. Exodus 19 verse 5. The leading office in God's economy is the priestly office. That's the leading office. It says, now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my commandment, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above what? All people, for the earth is mine. Look at the next verse there, verse 6. Come read it together, one to go. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of what? Priests, a holy nation. Now, you know, God said to Israel, you shall be unto me Peter said, we are. Because the condition was verse 5. The condition was, if you obey me. And they could not obey, but Jesus obeyed in our behalf and credited that righteousness into our account. And so Peter did not say, we shall be a nation of priests. He said, we are a nation of priests. That's who we are. A kingdom, pardon me, of priests unto God. That's who we are. So as far as God is concerned, in the eyes of the Father, the, the number one thing he sees of you is actually your priesthood. I'm grateful to God that you're a manager in a bank. And I think it's important that we come back to these things. I'm grateful to God that you are getting two cars, three cars, and all the rest. I'm grateful to God that, you know, you're making progress. You just built a house and all of that. But can I tell you something? None of that registers in heaven. Absolutely not. Brother Hagen had a vision, and he said he, I mean, I, I, I'm probably going to model up the story. Been a while, I read it. But, I mean, just to summarize it, he saw, I think, his aunt or something like that, and she asked him about the son who was, the aunt was there, the son was on the face of the earth or something like that, and said, how's he doing and all dressed? And then she made a very powerful statement. She said, when you make physical strides, you make progress physically, he said, does not register in heaven. Heaven does not even know. Heaven does not know that you bought a house. Heaven does not record that you bought a car. You're the one who knows. He says, what registers in heaven are the strides and the steps you take within the plan of God for your life. Now, can I tell you something? Miracles and blessings are powerful, but they are powerful enough as well to detract you from God's plan. I'll explain what I mean in just a bit. What was the temptation of Jesus? I always, I always like to remind people of this. What we call the temptation of Jesus was not a lady dancing in bikini. To say, if thou art the Christ, don't touch me. That was not the temptation of Jesus. What was the temptation of Jesus? I know you're hungry. Turn, the, if thou be the son of God, turn this stone to bread. How can performing miracle be a temptation? How can meeting my need be a temptation? But do you know that if he had turned stone to bread, his ministry <laughs> would have gone off to a different trajectory other than what God planned for him. And yet everybody would say, wow, what a progress we're making. 
I want you to think of it for a moment. Think of me standing here, and then I touch this monitor here, and it becomes a loaf of bread. You are not going to be looking at me the way you're looking at me. You're going to receive the whole message standing on your feet. And when I'm leaving here, you're going to be tugging on my trouser. Man of God, help me. <laughs> That's what you're going to do. Now, so imagine Jesus had done that. Don't you think that the three and a half years he spent was too long? If that was the first thing he did, the carpenter's son, turned stone to bread. And this was trending on Twitter. Tre okay, it's X now. Trending on Facebook, trending on TikTok. And somebody just caught that moment where the molecules of stone, whatever they are, Turn to bromate free bread. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Imagine that. That would have been a lovely way to start ministry. Don't you agree with me? I know you will agree with me. <laughs> That's a lovely way to start ministry. You have the, the news spreading everywhere. Miracle worker Joseph's son. We've never seen it after this order. Yet the Bible called it a temptation. Because it was at the expense of his revelation. If thou be the son. It was at the expense of that. I'm going somewhere today. And you have to stay with me. I believe in miracles. We see miracles every time in our ministry. And I'm grateful to God for it. I believe in material increase and all the rest. I believe in all of those things. But I can tell you for free. The only thing that registers in heaven. Is your priesthood. That's all that registers. By the time this whole thing is said and done. You know, we've gotten all the beautiful cars. It's like, I mean, if I said now that Jesus is returning soon, somebody's going to say, let me get married first. Let me have my kids before Jesus comes and all the rest. Thank God for the beautiful cars. Thank God for the beautiful houses. Can I tell you something? All of those things have no spiritual value, have no eternal value, have no eternal impact whatsoever. The only thing that has eternal impact is your priesthood. Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? And so the first thing Jesus did, you'd observe, is that when you study the ministry of Jesus Christ, he's described more to us as a priest, the high priest. Chapters upon chapters are written to show us the priestly ministry of Jesus. And whilst we know he's the king, but there's not much exegesis around that in scriptures. We know it. It's mentioned. It's not something we are unaware of. But we have entire books written about as straight eyes to the priesthood of Jesus telling you something about the priestly ministry. Are you still here? And I dare say to us, as the age wraps up and the Lord returns, what will matter most will be your priesthood. As the age wraps up and the Lord returns, what will matter most will be your priesthood. Let me show you one or two scriptures just to help you get a grasp of this matter of the priesthood that we're talking about. Uh, are you ready? Yes. Let's look at something that happened with Jacob. Genesis chapter 28. Let's look at something that happened with Jacob. Now, why is the priesthood important? If you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. Every deity regulates its domain through the priesthood. Every deity... That statement, as simple as it sounds, is extremely powerful. Every deity regulates the domain that it governs through its priesthood. Every deity. And by the way, we know that all of this is taken, um, th this religions and all the rest is taken from um, God. Just a parallel, copying what the Lord has done. Every deity regulates the environment and the domain that it governs through its priesthood. So the priesthood is the physical representation of a deity that may not be seen. I'm using um, general, generic um, explanation here. So they tell you that there's this deity amongst the Yorubas, and he has his priest. Am I, am I right? Okay. You have that deity, and he has his priest. And the priest usually has a shrine <laughs> and all the rest, and has his altar where he performs everything. And that deity will govern that domain through the activities of that priest. Are you getting what I'm saying here? In essence, the earth, please listen very carefully to this. You have to be reminded that everything we see on the face of the earth today is absolutely 
not partially, absolutely under the control of an unseen world. Everything. Now, it's easy for us to forget it and to be more sense rude and body rude and flesh rude and think that all that we are seeing, you know, everything that's happening is happening because it's happening. No, everything that we see on the face of the earth today, as we know it, that Tinubu got into power. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Everything that we see on the face of the earth is actually under the absolute control. A friend used the word, and I think that's the perfect way to put it. He said the physical, the spiritual, has a chokehold on the physical. I agree. Not a loose hold. Say me a chokehold. The physical, the spiritual, has a chokehold, which means whether you're aware or not does not matter. Does not matter. The transactions happening in the realm of the spirit that's controlling absolutely everything that we see in the physical. Let me give you biblical examples. Now, how many of you remember when the prophet said to Deborah, said um, to, the, to the captain of the host of Israel, he said, listen, this, this, this victory is not going to be given to you. It will be given to a woman. You remember the story? It's going to be given to a woman. The Bible tells us the war was on and all the rest. Israel began to have the victory. Caesarea began to run away. You remember the story? And then at some point, he ran into the tent of Jael, um, Heba the Kenite, ran into the tent, and the woman said to him, said, oh, beautiful, please lie down and all the rest. And she gave him milk, <laughs> you know, good sedative. And when he was fast asleep, she drove a nail through his temple, and he died in that place. Now, that's the story we read, the physical story. So if anybody asked you, how did Israel gain the victory? You will say, he ran, am I right? Israel was fighting against them. He ran, and then um, he ran into the tent of a woman, and the woman drove a nail into his head, am I right? Now, but if you study Judges chapter 5, when Deborah the prophetess took up a song, and speaking as a prophetess, you'd observe what she said. She said the stars from heaven fought in their courses. The stars they are referring to the angels. Now, so on the physical, the story we tell is that Israel took bow and arrow. Are you getting what I'm saying here? In the physical, the story we tell is that the man ran into the temple, the, I mean, the, the room of a woman, and she killed him. But when Deborah was going to give a spiritual interpretation to it, she said, Hey, look what's happening here. The stars from heaven fought in their courses. So if Israel thought they won because they fought, they were making a mistake. There were angels fighting the battle they did not see. Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? All right, judges, let me, let me get you. Do we have that, Mr. DJ? Uh, and I want you to see that. Are you still here? Mm -mm -mm. Judges chapter 5, verse 20 what? Good. Let's look at it together, because you have to understand this. Nothing in the natural happens by chance. Okay, okay. Who is Cicera? Remember the story now? How did Cicera die? A woman drove a nail through his head. Am I right? That's what the previous chapter tells us. When the prophet took up a song to give the prophetic interpretation of what had happened, to show us what really happened in the realm of the spirit. What did she say? Everybody read. Look at the previous verse. Look at the previous verse. All right. It says, the kings came and fought. Then fought the kings of Canaan in Tanakh by the waters of Megiddo. They took no gain of money. Next verse. Let's all read the next verse together. I want to go. They fought from heaven. The stars in their causes fought against Sisera. So who won the battle? Talk to me. Talk to me. That means who, who made him see the woman's tents? Who made him go into the tents? Who made the woman think of giving him milk? Who made the woman think of driving a nail through his head? Come and say with me, the stars. Talking about the angels of God. They were the unseen participants in an event that was playing out. Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? So you, you think that, you, you, know, you can imagine one of the warriors saying, we fought, we won. Oh yeah, yeah. Yep, we agree. If you see my bow, I mean, I sharpened it. If, if, and the number, all of those things were happening. But talk to me, behind the scene. Remember the prophet said to his servant, he said, those who be with us are more than those who, come on, say it. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's the mistake. 
There are too many scriptures we are acquainted with and we quote wrongly. For example, we say, um, at the mention of the name of Jesus. That's wrong. He never said at the mention of the name of Jesus. He said, at the name. The name can show up. The name can be sung. The name can be thought of. Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? Now, so when you say that those who be with us are more than those who are against us, you miss the point. No, Elijah was not talking about, um, he, he, he wasn't referring to a natural army. Let, let's look at it together. Give me the previous verse. Let's, let's put it in context. Let's put it in context. All right, and when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city. You know, it's only King James that will, will blow and speak wrong English and it will be right. Behold an host. <laughs> compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? Look at the next verse there, verse 16. Everybody want to go? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us, hold on, hold on. Observe what he said and what he did not say. He didn't say they that be with us are more than those who are against us. Because if he said they are more than those who are against us, he would have been referring to this physical army. Uh -uh. He said they that be with us are more than they that be with them. If they have any advantage, it's those who are with them. So Elijah was not thinking of the bow, the arrow, the sword, the shield, the habergeons. He wasn't thinking of all of that. He said, I know behind this physical army is a spiritual entity. But thanks be unto God, they that be with us. The problem is, if we're not careful, even our teachings in the church make us more sense rude, more body rude. We think of these physical things and all the rest. It's time to ascend and rise higher. It's time to control things from the realm of the spirit. You know why? The natural will always be under the domination of the spiritual. Always. Remember the king of Tyre and the prince of Tyre. There was a natural king that everybody was looking at and saying, why is he ruling this way? And then Ezekiel comes and shows us that there's actually a demon spirit called the prince, are you getting what I'm saying here, who was behind everything you were seeing in the natural. So every, now please stay with me here. Hmm. Hmm. Ooh, can I get into this? I've been, you know, you know how that, I've, I've just been going around like this. I don't know if I should enter. I will enter. Now, hear this. When you study, hold this for me. When you study through the scriptures, one of the things you note, and, um, We'll look into it in the sec second session. Is that the earth is actually given. You have to understand this. That there is, no, there is no space on the face of the earth that is not under the domain of a controlling spirit. There's not one. There's not one. That's why John, um, you know, um, Isaiah called it the face of the covering cast. John spoke of it this way. He says that the entire world is under the domain of the evil one. Have you ever read that before? And so there's no space. You have to understand this. There's no, you will never find any square meter that is not under the control of, of certain spirits. Now our job as believers is to enforce the dominion and the authority of Jesus within the spaces where we are, but there is no space that is void of it. Are you following what I'm saying here? Now, when we know that, we know that we're not dealing with just with natural things. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Irrespective of what you're seeing on the external, don't you ever mistaken it to think that this is all there is to it. There's so much more you have not seen. There's so much more governing it. Are you following what I'm saying here? Now, how do demons, how do deities how do they control the domain that they have? They establish what is called a priesthood. Is somebody following what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's why even in Nigeria, before the gospel came into Nigeria, certain gods ruled over certain locations. You will have an Ifa priest in Osu, but you won't have him in Kaduna. <laughs> Are you still with me today? Yep, yep. 
and the shade of voodoo they practiced in Benin Republic will be different from what you see in Ghana. Are you getting what I'm saying here? You know why? You know, many times, believers are, can be quite, what's the word? What's the word? Naive to spiritual things. We can be naive to spiritual things. I think sometimes the children of this world are actually more acquainted with these things. And you don't cross territories, which means wherever you have a deity in charge of, it becomes wrong of another deity to try to cross and practice their priesthood in this domain. Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? It's absolutely wrong. And that, that will cause a fight and all of that. Now, so spirits govern true men. Are you following what I'm saying here? They establish the authority that they have and they negotiate, they make transactions on the face of the earth, things moving things around, and they do it through what is called a priesthood. Now, in the kingdom of God, he has established what is called a priesthood, and the believer is at the core of it. Genesis 28. Let me show you this here. Oh, hallelujah. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Are you still here? We are building up to something. We are not just beggars hoping to get rich. We are an extension of a kingdom. Did you hear what I said? We are not just beggars hoping to get rich. No, we are extensions of what? A kingdom. Genesis 28. And let's look at this curious story from verse 10. Genesis 28, verse 10. Genesis 28 and verse 10. Are you getting anything? Mm. He says, Jacob went out from Bathsheba, went um, toward Haran. Next verse there. Let's read quickly. He lighted upon a certain place, tarried there all night because the sun was set. He took up the stones of that place, put them for his pillows. I don't know how stones can be pillows. All right. And lay down in that place to sleep. Next verse. Everybody read with me. One to go. And he dreamed. And behold, a ladder set up on the earth. Hold on. Where was the ladder set up? I want you to take note of everything he says. He didn't say a ladder that came down from heaven. He said a ladder that was set up on the earth. So the ladder was set on the face of the earth. The next thing you note here is this. He says, behold, the angels of God, what were they doing? Ascending and descending. Not descending and ascending. This is important. The ladder was set up on the earth. The angels were ascending and descending. So where's the co control center? Where's the command center on the earth? Because the priesthood is not in heaven. The priesthood is on earth. I'm going somewhere with this. Stay with me. He says the ladder was set up on the earth. You, you, you see, everything in the scriptures is there for a reason. Are you following what I'm saying here? It's not just there because by chance and all the rest. No, he says he was set up on the earth. The top of it reached to the heaven. So this ladder started out from the earth and reached onto where? The heaven. What did God say? He said, whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound where? Whereas he didn't say whatsoever you bind in heaven. No. Where do we bind it? On earth. Where do you lose it? On earth. Where's the control center? On earth. Now, in just a bit, I'll show you that's wrong. The control center is not on earth. Ah, yeah. Yeah, I'll show you in just a bit. Look at what it says. And behold, the angels of God are sent. Somebody say, ha. I mean, he just literally opened his mouth like, wow. <laughs> he says, behold, the angels of God are sending and descending on it. Next verse. You'd love this. Behold, the Lord stood above it. This is beautiful. The ladder was set up from the earth, and the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest, blah, blah, I give thee, on and on. Read on with me quickly. All right, you shall spread. Give me verse 15 quickly. And behold, I am with thee. All of that, I'll do that which I've spoken. Give me 16. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep. He says, and he said, surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. Everybody read verse 17. One to go. And he was afraid and said, how dreadful is this place? This is none other but the house of God and what? The gate of heaven. Read it again. This is none other but the house of God and what? The gate of heaven. Can I have Pastor Gideon, please? Can I have um, Brother um, Emmanuel? Please stand here. One minute. Uh, and you stand here. What did he describe it as? I want you to keep these two thoughts in your mind. Number one is what? The house of God. He said, this place, this place where angels are ascending and descending is what? The house of God. And then he said, this is what? The gate, not the gates. 
the gate of heaven. I'm going to explain what it means in just a bit. You have to stay with me. In John chapter 1, in the 51st verse, Jesus interacted with Nathanael. He said, I saw thee under a tree, afar off, an Israelite indeed in whom there is no guile. Then he said to him in verse 51, he said unto him, verily, verily, I say unto you, hereafter you shall see heaven open, and the angels of God doing what? Ascending and what? Descending upon a ladder. So the ladder that Jacob saw was a man. Is somebody still here with me? So Jacob saw a ladder and said, this is beautiful. But that was the Old Testament. He couldn't explain what it was. Jesus came to show us what exactly is this ladder. How do you bridge events between the earth and the heavens? How do you negotiate transactions? How do you get things done? Jesus said, you shall see the heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending. Not upon the Son of God. Every time the scripture says Son of Man, it is to show his identification with our humanity. Showing you, this is you. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? If he had said the Son of God, then we would have had to use some theological explanation to bring ourselves into it. But when he says the Son of Man, he's saying that in the same way he was a man. He says, you are a man today, but you are that ladder. Angels ascending and what? Descending. The priesthood is the ladder. Is somebody following what I'm saying here? Angels ascending and descending. But here's where I'm going to. On one hand, he says, it is the house of God. The first responsibility of the priesthood, house the presence. Please write it down. The first responsibility of the priesthood. And this is the first token of the priesthood. This is the first fruit of the priesthood, the presence. When he talks about the house of God, he's not talking about just a physical building. He's talking about a stewardship of the presence. Are you following what I'm saying here? And then the next thing he tells us, he says, this is the gate of what? Heaven. When gate is mentioned in scriptures, he talks about authority. Which means if we house the presence, we will of necessity have authority to effect change on the earth. Oh boy. But here's what I want you to know. You cannot talk about the gate of heaven without talking about the house of God. No. The house of God must, it's called the tabernacle of David. Oh dear. <laughs> Is somebody still here today? Uh, are you getting anything? Yes, Tell the person beside you we are ankle deep, ankle, ankle, ankle deep. That's, we are far, we are far. We, are, we, are, we have not even started. We have not started. Glory to God. So who mediates, I mean who, who, who negotiates who determines what happens on the face of the earth? A priest who has taken his place or a priest who refuses to take his place. For there will be no vacuum. Every priest who is not standing, there are other priests standing. Representing other deities. Somebody getting what I'm saying here? Please stay with me. And I want you to understand that this is coming from the depth of my heart. As, as one who has received mercy from the Lord, I can tell you for free that the quest for miracles, the quest for distance, if it is not well balanced, will destroy our priesthood. It will destroy our priesthood. <laughs> we have miracle services. We are going to have one on Sunday. I can't speak against an office in which I stand. I must speak to the balance of that office. Are you following what I'm saying here? Which means the quest, because at the core of the priesthood is this. And if I have the time, I'm going to show you my next session. At the core of the priesthood is this. Levi shall have no part amongst the children of Israel. Which means Levi cannot judge the progress in his life by what other Israelites used to judge themselves. Which means if somebody from the tribe of Issachar comes and says that my horse has produced 10 new horses. 10. Look at the productivity. Look at my business and all the rest. The only thing Levi could rejoice in, he says that for God is the inheritance of the Levite. Which means if we don't get to the place where we are more excited about God than things, we have not started. Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? And if we're not careful, if we're not careful, we're going to be doing things and they'll, be, they'll look beautiful. We'll actually rejoice in God about it. But then it's eroding the priesthood. Are you following what I'm saying here? Because if you, if, you, if you don't understand what the priesthood really is, you can assume that you are standing in that office. It is the house of God. 
which means hosting that presence, stewarding the presence. The presence of God is a precious commodity. It's not just something to be scattered everywhere. It must be hosted and right and dispensed intelligently. Are you following what I'm saying here? It must be hosted what? A right. And it must be what? Dispensed intelligently by somebody. So priests today stand as that ladder, making that connection from the face of the earth. They are the ladder upon which angels ascend and descend. Are you following what I'm saying here? They are the ladders upon which God is able to execute his plan and his purposes in the earth. Because that, observe what Jacob said, and I don't know if you saw it. I, I didn't want to mention it, but let me say it here. He says, a ladder was set up. So there has to be a setting up of your priesthood. You don't just wake up into it. No, there has to be a setting up there of your priesthood. Are you still here? Hmm. Now we are building up. Are you still here? So on this side is what? The house of God. And what happens in the house of God? Every single thing we do is one thing is the focus. To host and steward the presence of God aright. Are you following what I'm saying here? And at the core of that thing is two things. Number one, consecration. Number two, worship. When it talks about, and I'm going to show you from scriptures in just a bit. It talks about ministering to the Lord. On this other side, when it talks about the gate of heaven, it's talking about authority being dispensed on the face of the earth. On this side is what we call intercession. Which means when you talk about the priesthood, the things you actually see in the priest is worship, and on this side, what? Intercession. Which means, hear me and please hear me well. The prayer of petition and all of those things is domiciled in the office of a king. And as beautiful as it is, that is not what makes us priests before God. What makes you a priest before God is ministering to the Lord in worship. Are you getting what I'm saying here? And on the other hand there is taking your place as an intercessor because that's where authority is dispensed. Are you still here? So we can have a prayer move that is not raising priests. Somebody get what I'm saying here? We can have a beautiful, powerful prayer move that is not raising priests. Let me tell you the power of worship. Worship is not a style of music. Worship is, listen, you have to understand this. Worship is not slow, it's not fast. Worship has nothing to do with that. Worship is not even songs or singing. Worship is a vehicle. God established worship as a vehicle to transport people from place to place in spiritual realities, from place to place in his plans and purposes for their lives. I'm going to show you a few scriptures here. Somebody says, Pastor, can, you can sit down, gentlemen. Pastor, can you explain what you just said now? I'll explain to you. Jesus went to the woman at the well of Samaria. You remember the story? And then they had this interaction there that went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Woman at the well of Samaria, oh, give me water if you know who I am, blah, 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 no dress, no dress. Then finally the woman began to get a sense that this is probably not an ordinary person. He must be a prophet. So she asked him the question, you know how you meet somebody you feel is deeply spiritual? That question you have been waiting to ask. Am I once saved? Is he ever saved? You know those, those, those kind of questions <laughs> that you have been waiting for, who are we ask? Finally she has this encounter with Jesus. She goes, ah, yes, 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 yes. Leave all this water business. Let me ask you a question. Our father said on this mountain we should worship. Being Samaritans, you the Jews say is on this mountain that we should worship. And then she asked Jesus, she said, where should we worship? Look at it. Can, can I have that verse there? I mean, whoever is on the text, you just give us the text there. I wanted you to follow the thought here. Say, so where should we worship? I said, I mean, if, is it this mountain or is it that mountain? Where do we have, I mean, who is on this? I mean, where do we worship and all this? Then Jesus answered in a very interesting way. Jesus said, um, can I have my, I mean, let me just show you myself here. John chapter 4, let's run through it together. It's important that you um, see this here. You're getting anything today? Good. John chapter 4, and um, verse 20. 19, the woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain. Ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. 
Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. So what was the question? It was a location question. Where do we worship? Am I right? What was the answer of Jesus? You worship, you know not what, but we worship what we know. For salvation is of the Jews. Everybody read verse 23 and verse 24. Want to go. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the f- true worshippers shall worship the Father in... Hold on, hold on. What was the question? Where do we worship? Not how do we worship. People say in spirit and in truth is how to worship. No, you're wrong. Absolutely wrong. That's not the question she asked. She said, where do we worship? Where? And to buttress the fact that Jesus was answering a location question, he says, look at what he said in the previous verse. He said, um, you worship what you know not, verse 21. He says, woman, believe me, when you, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem. Are you following what I'm saying? So he was clear that he wanted to answer the location question. <laughs> I said this before, Rick Joyner said he had a vision into heaven, a great prophet of God. He had a vision into heaven, and then he saw like a mountain representing Zion, the church of Jesus Christ. And he saw different um, locations on that mountain. He said at the lowest level, he saw truths like sanctification, redemption, holiness. And then as you went higher and higher, you saw finer truths of the gospel and all of the rest. He said, but he saw people at different levels. Different levels. You know, as I was meditating upon this many years ago, the Lord began to show me this. He said there are different locations in the realm of the spirit. You know, the realm of the spirit is a location. It's not, um, it's not an, something mysterious. It's actually a location. You know that you can live in, and this is, I mean, I, I do not say this to demean anybody and all the rest. Um, I grew up in Epaja. Do you get what I'm saying? So that's fine. I mean, you can live in Epaja, and live in a Banana Island, and you're living in Lagos. Everybody is living in Lagos. In those days, people would tell you, I live in Lekki. Lekki then was close to Cameroon. They are on, I mean, by the time you go and visit, they are living at the border of Cameroon. But everybody was living in Lekki at the time. Everybody says, I'm living in Lagos, but your experiences are different. Some people came out of their house this morning, and it was Bingo that welcomed them. You know Bingo, the street dog. They welcomed them, and they had to run a bit. And just down the road, somebody's grinding pepper, somebody's doing this, somebody's doing that, and all the rest. Somebody else came out of the house in the same Lagos, and it was a Range Rover. Rover. <laughs> and you know, the, those exotic dogs, I mean, people taking works, you know, um, stroll, and I, I, you know, and some of them are speaking in tongues, and the tongues is different, and all the rest. We all are living in Lagos, but our experiences are different. I hope you know that it's the same thing in the realm of the spirit. There's the GRA in the spirit. And there's the FHA. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, FHA is Federal Housing Authority. <laughs> and that's different from government reserved areas. Are you getting what I'm saying here? It's all in the spirit. It's all in the spirit. So somebody says, hey, I live in Lagos. You, but you don't look like you live in Lagos. Your skin does not look, well, it looks like a Paja skin. <laughs> but it's the same Lagos. I was born in Mushin. Praise God. That's where the hospital was. That's not where we lived, please. I'm <laughs> just kidding. But that's where I was born. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Everybody says, I live in Lagos. Everybody, we are all spirit beings, but our experiences are different. Why is that the case? Because it's the priesthood that makes spiritual realities come alive. Worship is that vehicle with which God transports us from one realm to another, from one reality to another. Are you following what I'm saying here? This is important. This is important. Remember the story of um, the disciples, the two disciples who were walking with Jesus. And the Bible says that Jesus taught them from where they were on the road to Emmaus to Jerusalem. You remember that? Now, I've done the study. It will take you two and a half hours to walk slowly at normal pace from Emmaus to Jerusalem. But the Bible tells us that Jesus began to teach of himself from Moses to the, from the Lord to the prophets. Now, you'll agree with me that the greatest teacher that ever lived is Jesus Christ. Am I right? Okay. Yet the Bible tells us they did not know it was Jesus. Jesus was teaching them about himself, but they did not know it was Jesus. They didn't know. They said to themselves, oh, this is a beautiful message. In fact, I'm sure at some point they said, preach on, preacher. 
How do I know? The Bible says, they said, did our hearts not burn within us while he yet spoke to us? Even though their hearts burned, they did not know him. How did they know him? The Bible says, when they got to where they were going to, Jesus acted as though he was going to move further. Then they constrained him and said, stay with us. It was not in the teaching their eyes were open. It was in the staying. Somebody get what I'm saying here? This is why many believers are what dead, but there's no light. Because if Jesus taught somebody for two and a half hours and they did not see it, and the only time they saw it was when they said, stay with us, intimacy, the priesthood. Are you following what I'm saying here? This is why you have several believers who can teach you great messages, but they have not been transported into the realities of those things. You know why? There's no staying. There's no staying. And the staying there is what? The priesthood. The staying. <laughs> Look at what it says. It says, go, go to the previous verse, verse 15 there. Verse 15, 24, verse 15. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Next verse. And all the rest. He says, but the eyes were withholding and all the rest. You read the story. As he was going to move on, they said, stay with us the night. Spend the night with us. In intimacy, the scales dropped off their eyes. Suddenly, they began to see the things that they had heard. If they left that place, they would have been better teachers of the truth than any other disciple. But it didn't mean that being better teachers, they had light. Is somebody following what I'm saying here? And I see a lot of activities in the body of Christ today, a lot of worded people, but until we give attention to the priesthood, until we give attention to the stains, the tarrying, and tarrying is a personal thing. It's a very personal thing. Until we give attention to that, there's so much we will know, but very little we will experience. So much we will know, but very little we will experience. Say with me the priesthood. The priesthood. Say with me the priesthood. the priesthood. So the first responsibility is what? To host the presence, to steward the presence. Let me give you a scripture here. Deuteronomy, are you still here tonight? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. Deuteronomy chapter 10. I want you to see this. Deuteronomy chapter 10. So the priest is careful with anything that tampers with the presence. Are you following what I'm saying here? The priest is careful with anything that tampers with the presence. Now, can I tell you something? Um, this may shock you, but not many things tamper with the power because there are gifts given. Are you following what I'm saying here? Not many things tamper with the power. There are gifts given. But so much tampers with the presence. Uh, let me put it this way. How many of you have found yourself in offense towards someone and then you lifted up your hands and it just seemed as though you had hit a brick wall? Just would seem as though, what's going on here? And all the rest. You know, you can still lay hands on the sick and they get healed in that place. Doesn't mean that because you're in offense. No. Chances are that things are still going to happen for you. Things are still going to work. But the presence is a very sensitive thing. Are you following what I'm saying? Here? The priesthood is careful with anything and everything that tampers with the presence. This is actually what we call consecration. It's a careful garden. You're guarding the presence. The sac That's why it's called a sacred priesthood. Are you following what I'm saying here? And I think there's a lot of looseness today that I see everywhere in the name of Christianity, of work Christianity. Even to the dressing. In the name of work Christianity. I saw somebody say, the old man out there. He was talking to God. He said, the old man out there. Pardon me, the old man up there. And he was sounding, you know, cute and all the rest. But there's a sacredness to the priesthood. Are you following what I'm saying? Any and everything. You know, Brother Hagin spoke about it. He called it loose talking, um, 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 loquaciousness. I mean, about how that with your words, you can literally deflate the presence that you carry. Let me put it this way. And I think this will help you. How many of you have come out of a session of prayer, one hour prayer or two hours prayer, and you put on a gospel music and your spirit revolted? Gospel. Now, I, I, I do not want to be, you know, folks may not like what I'm saying, but it's the truth nonetheless. It's the truth. I mean, you just came out of that place spending time in the presence of God, just two hours, not, oh God, give me. No, you're just there praying in the Holy Ghost. 
enjoying the presence of God's Spirit, ministering to the Lord and allowing the Lord minister back to you. Are you getting what I'm saying here? And then you just came out of that place and then they put on pow, 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 uh, whatever it is, and you went, no, no, please change it. Not because you are trying to be spiritual. And what has happened is this. We, we have a generation that has made people look like they are being overly spiritual by being normal. So you see people shine away from the sacredness of the priesthood in a bid to fit in. One of the things you notice about priests is they don't go everywhere. Have you ever seen, if, if you're having your party today and if our priest came, what will you do? You, you, you the celebrant, you will leave the party. Oh, no, no, I know, I know, I know, I know. You have the name of Jesus. He said, get out. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying here? It's sacredness to it. You don't see them everywhere. They don't talk anyhow. There's a behavior expected of the priest. Why? Because you are a custodian of something that is precious. Did you read what James said? He said, know ye not that the Holy Spirit that dwelleth in you lusteth unto envy. Have you ever read that scripture before? All right, let's read it. Show me the sacredness of the priesthood. Oh, hallelujah. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Look at what he says here. James chapter 4. I want you to see it. And verse 4. Because the context is actually a very strange one. He says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses. Ah, ah. <laughs> this New Testament. Look at the way James wrote it. And if you read the context from verse 1 to verse 3, there's nothing about sexual immorality. So you have to understand what he's saying. He's not saying that they were adulterers. You can imagine a pastor coming to church. All of you are adulterers and adulteresses. I'm watching all of you. You better be priests. You can imagine that that's not what was happening here. If you read the context, he's saying that they are lost in and desirous of things other than God. Look at what he says. Ye adulterers and adulteresses. Know ye not that the friendship of the world, he didn't say friendship of another man's husband. Or of another man's wife. On what basis did he call them adulterers and adulteresses? He says, friendship of the world is what? Enmity with God. Now, I want you to see there are no gray lines. So me the priesthood. There are no gray lines. You can't finish saying, my beloved is the most beautiful. And then you go out and say, ah, ah, pa, ko, eh, 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 eh. And then they tell you, no, 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 you know, you know, no, it's not a genre. What nonsense are you saying? You are a vessel, sir. And I always tell people, it's very simple. You know, people try to put some spin around it that makes no sense. It's very simple. You don't know the day the evil time will come. Paul said the evil day will come to everybody. So let's imagine you just got a terrible report right now. Haven't finished your Akpako song. Can you release faith? Can you release faith? Tell me the sacredness of the priesthood. You know why? We are hosting the presence. Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? We are hosting the presence. Look at what he says. He says that friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is what? The enemy of God. Now look at the next verse. Everybody read it. Want to go. Do you think that the scripture said in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us, lost it to envy, the Holy Ghost. Look at two negative words. Lost, envy. Should not be used with the Holy Spirit. Just so as to let you know how important this is. It says, the spirit that dwelleth in us lost it unto what? Envy. So me, the priesthood. The priesthood. So there is a responsibility that we have. The responsibility that we have to what? Preserve, protect, guard that presence. Are you still here? Glory to God. I said glory to God. Deuteronomy chapter 10. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 10. We are building onto something today. Verse 8, Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 8. All right, let's read together. One to go, what does it say? At that time, the Lord separated the tribe of Levi. Number one, please write these three things down in your notes. Number one, what is the first thing he separated them to do? To bear the ark of the covenant. What's the ark of the covenant? The presence. To bear the presence. 
Are you following what I'm saying here? What is the first responsibility of the priest? To bear what? The presence. That's the first res responsibility. Number two, what does he say? To stand before the Lord to minister to him, unto him. Come on, let's read that out loud together. One, two, go. To stand before the Lord to what? Minister to him. What is the second responsibility of the Levite? Bearing the ark speaks to consecration. Stand before the Lord to minister to him. Talks about that place of prayer, of worship, ministering to the Lord and all of the rest. It says to stand before the Lord, to minister unto him. And then what's the last one there? And to bless in his name unto this day. Hallelujah. To stand before the Lord, to minister unto him, and to bless in his name unto this day. So what are the three responsibilities there? Number one, bear the ark. Are you seeing that? That's the first thing. What's number two there? To stand before the Lord, to minister to him. And what's number three there? To bless in his name. Yep. So we have a responsibility to do what? To minister unto the Lord. We have a responsibility. That's the first thing when it comes to the priesthood. Ministering unto the Lord. Consecration, which I won't go into fully. We have a series of teachings on that. And then ministering unto the Lord. Ministering unto the Lord. You can have a prayer life built on supplication and petition, but it's not a prayer life. I can tell you that for free. It's not a prayer life. Supplication and petition will never lead you into the fullness of God's plan for your life. It's in worship. As they minister to the Lord, the Lord said, the plan of God came to them as they minister to the Lord. Are you getting what I'm saying here? And that has to be restored to the body of Christ. Hours non-stop just ministering to the Lord. And then you remember your need, but you keep it at bay. Are you following what I'm saying here? You know why? The lesser is included in the greater. Yeah, yeah. Levi did not lose anything if he had God. Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? Issachar may say, I have land, but Levi will say, I have God. And guess what? Everybody brought all they had to Levi in the temple. <laughs> oh boy, you didn't hear what I said. <laughs> they all served Levi's purposes, even though Levi was not out there. This is what I've learned. Too many people are trying to promote themselves. Stay in the secret place. Did you hear what I said? Too many people are trying to be things. Too many people are trying to do things. Too many people are trying, trying, and trying, and trying. I've found out that if you spend time with the Lord, a lot of the things that you are desirous and praying for will naturally fall into your laps. Naturally. Without effort. If somebody listen to what I'm saying here. So it mean naturally. naturally. Ministering to the Lord. Yep. That we have a prayer meeting now and then somebody's doling out prayers and you say amen does not mean you have a prayer life. No. Ministering to the Lord. An hour there. Thank you, Lord. You get tired. You sit down. You take water. And then you continue again. And guess what? You need to do it over a period of time. Don't say these are spiritual things. Two minutes is enough. It's not the time. It's the heart. Jesus had to be on the cross for a certain number of hours. Don't say it's the heart. Jesus said something at the Garden of Gethsemane. He said to them, he said, can you not tarry with me with, for this what? One hour. He gave a time to it. He gave a time to it. And to let you know that the time was important, when they woke up eventually to join him in prayer, what did he say? It's late. It's too late. Sleep on. Just continue sleeping. Which means if you pray now, it's a waste of time. Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? There are allotted times in the things of God. Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? You go, I, I will pray the prayer later. Sleep on. Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? You, you're there in your, in your, at work and then you just have, you see, this is the priesthood. You just have that nudge on the inside of yourself. You can't explain what it is. You go, okay, 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 okay. Okay, I, 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 will, I, will, I will get back to it. I'll get back to it. By the time you're ready to get to it, the burden has lifted. Sleep on. It's called the hour of darkness. Sleep on. Are you following what I'm saying here? Sleep on. Sleep on. The Holy Ghost wakes you up in the middle of night, 3 a.m. You say, no, 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 no. Let me just sleep two hours more. By five, I'll be very alert. Sleep on. Are you following what I'm saying here? Because the one hour you will pray now does not matter again. It was at this time it mattered. Is somebody following what I'm saying here? So you're there. Somebody says, is this, is, is this not legalism and all dress? No, it's not. 
is discipline. You're there. You set your time, one hour. One hour. You set the time. I'm staying, waiting on the Lord. And, and all you're doing there is just praying in the spirit and allowing the Lord minister back to you. Are you getting what I'm saying here? I'm not talking about all this, um, I want to get this, I want to get that, and you're fighting. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you just ministering to the Lord. The Bible says that as they minister to the Lord, the Lord spoke. It's in that place his voice is heard. Isaiah spoke about it. He said you would have a song as in the night. When the holy solemnity is kept, he says you will have gladness of heart. He says, and then the Lord shall cause his voice to be heard. He says, hey, he says we are the people of his pasture. The sheep of his hand. He says, today, if you hear his voice, when the sheep sits down, he speaks. Somebody get what I'm saying here? So we have to restore that discipline. It's a discipline that has to be restored to the body. It's a discipline. We're not, just, we're not asking for anything. You're just there. Thank you, Lord. And you can practice it there. You're just there. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lego shanamande karuatana versuste. Now, the first thing you want to do is you get a grip on your mind. Did you hear what I said? Yes, sir. You get a strong grip on your mind. Not that you are saying marata kabaya jagada. Ah, ah. Why is our hair scattered? Ah, wah, 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 wah. Eh, hmm. eh, eh, eh. This body of Christ. Eh, no, you get a grip on your mind. Are you following what I'm saying here? Every time your mind is trying to sway away, you pull it back. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My beloved is the most beautiful. May we never lose our wonder. You stand up. You change the position. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You go quiet for five minutes. Just pacing back and forth. What are you doing? You are, it's called spiritual sacrifices. Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? Let me tell you something. Everybody look at me. It's in the priesthood we cook the word. All this word that you are collecting from conference to conference is useless without the priesthood. I'm telling you the truth. We had a generation that didn't know one tenth of what we know, but they produced a hundred times what we have produced. You know why? They had a priesthood. They had a priesthood. The little they knew, they tabernacled on it in the priesthood. But you have people from conference to conference, from sound bite to sound bite, and there can be no 10 minutes of just there, just, just turning that thing over in the spirit. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. I said, this, I'm a priest. I said, this, I attend to an altar. I say it again, I'm a priest. I attend to an altar. Come on, say it again. I'm a priest. I attend to an altar. And guess what? One of your first sacrifices are your words. Your words. Your words are sacrifices. <laughs> your words. Thank you, Lord. You're gracious. You're kind. That's a sacrifice. You're good. Thank you. The Lord is good and his mercies endure it forever. Hallelujah. I, I, I discovered that if you pray this way much in your life, your prayer points will be reduced by 50%. If you pray this way much in your life, your prayer points will be reduced by 50%. I've discovered that. You know why? Because many of it would have been resolved by the Spirit. Many of it. I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost where you are. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost where you are. I want you to minister to the Lord. Minister to the Lord. Minister to the Lord. Minister to the Lord. Minister to the Lord where you are. Now, if you don't have a prayer language, it's okay to speak beautiful things unto the Lord. Just tell him, Lord, you're gracious. Lord, you're kind. Come on, let's minister to the Lord where we are. And you don't need a keyboard to minister to the Lord. No. You don't need a minstrel to minister to the Lord. You can't be looking around and getting distracted and be ministering to the Lord. Hold on with the keyboard. Just hold on. Let everybody minister to the Lord by themselves. Just minister to the Lord where you are. So much happens. So much happens. So much happens. So much happens. Oh, 
hallelujah. Que sos to frediga anko begi ato nongos ke fredigos. Je ve do la basse ekla anto bredigos ko fretela mon je ke tela mon de gebahaya. Monto brede bede bele dogo shoto no boko shaka tela mongos ko fratila anche tele bonde. Oh hallelujah. Kande vrede gede 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 bo shata kabaya. Yes, Come on, go ahead and minister to the Lord. These must form the bulk of our prayer. Minister to him in your understanding. Minister to him in the spirit. Minister to the Lord wherever you are. Do all to eliminate distractions. Do all to eliminate distractions. Minister to the Lord wherever you are. Do all to eliminate distractions. Close your eyes if you have to close your eyes. It will help that you lift your hands and you minister to the Lord. It will help that you lift your hands and minister to Him. Don't be casual about the presence of God. Don't be casual about the presence of God. Don't be casual about the presence of God. Oh, Sarah no kombeli kashaila antre digos ko frete la mangi. Geneve to la manga dila angos keira antra digos ko prediga bashana gabahai. Hallelujah. Just a second. Hold your Bibles in your hands. Hold your Bibles in your hands. Hosea chapter 14. Hosea chapter 14. Hosea 1 4 and verse 2. I want us to see verse 2. Hosea 14 verse 2. If you, if you can't get it quick enough, just look at the screen. But take note of the text. Hosea chapter 14 verse 2. Everybody read. What does it say? Take with you words. Come on. I want you to read it with a loud voice. Take with you what? Come on. What do you take with you? When you're coming before the Lord, what do you take with you? Words. What does it say? Turn to the Lord and say unto him, take away all iniquity and receive us graciously. You have to understand the prophetic writings. They were writing to a time to come before the Messiah was offered as our sacrifice. Now he's offered as our sacrifice. Are you following what I'm saying here? But then what does he tell us to do? Look at the next thing he says. So will we what? Render the cows of our lips. Not the cows in our stall. Not the ram in our, our yard. Where are the rams now? Come and talk to me. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. Where are the rams now? Come and talk to me. Where are the cows, the bulls, the goats, the bullocks? Where are they now? The turtle doves. Israel had to take turtle doves, bulls, and bullocks, and all the rest. What are we taking? Words. I want you to think of it this way. That the same way they would put the sacrifice on the altar, and they knew, they knew that the realm of the spirit would respond to it. Are you following what I'm saying here? They knew that something will happen when we open our mouths to minister to the Lord. It is a sacrifice. It's not casual. That's why you can't approach it, approach it casually. I see believers going, Rakatakaya. No. There is a sense of seriousness. There is a sense of, hey, this matters. Are you following what I'm saying here? It's not a casual thing. Think of that priest carrying the calabash in the middle of the night with oil and egg and all of that. Think of that. Look at the sacredness with which they approach it. Now look at the sacredness with which you must approach when you lift your hands. And you begin to speak words unto God. You know why? They are not empty. They are calves. They are sacrifices. I want somebody to offer a sacrifice tonight. Yes. In the next one minute. I want you to offer the cows of your lips. The cows of your lips. Yes. The cows of your lips. We're opening our mouths. If you have a prayer language, that's beautiful. You go ahead and speak in the spirit. If you don't have one, then you go ahead and declare what the word has said concerning you and concerning this Jesus. 
Oh, yes. This is where strength comes from. This is where instruction comes from. This is where guidance comes from. This is where our lives are beautified. Oh, yes. Somebody pray out loud in the Holy Ghost. Minister unto the Lord. Minister unto the Lord. Minister unto the Lord. Come on, with a louder voice. Minister unto the Lord. Minister unto the Lord. Take a song if you want to take a song. Go ahead and minister unto the Lord. Go ahead and minister unto the Lord. Yes, 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 yes. Go ahead and minister unto the Lord. This is you standing in your priesthood. Declare how beautiful this Jesus is. How glorious he is. Declare of his goodness, his grace, his kindness. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost where you are. 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 This is not a casual moment. Pray in the Holy Ghost where you are. This is not a casual moment. Pray in the Holy Ghost where you are. This is not a casual moment. This is not a casual moment. Pray in the Holy Ghost where you are. Somebody's heart is going to be filled afresh with love for the Lord. Somebody's heart is going to be filled afresh with love for this Jesus. Somebody's heart is going to be filled afresh with love for this Jesus. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost where you are. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost where you are. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost where you are. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost where you are. Pray in the Holy Ghost where you are. The secret place. That's the place of strength. That's where instruction comes from. Come on, pray where you are. Come on, pray where you are. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost where you are. Minister to the Lord tonight. We're making no requests. We're just fellowshipping with the Lord. This should form the core of our priesthood. Minister to the Lord. Minister to the Lord. Oh, yeah. Kefela Kaushada Minister to the Lord where you are. Minister to the Lord. 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 Come on, let's take it a notch higher. Minister to the Lord. Somebody is getting full of the Holy Ghost afresh. Somebody is getting full of the Holy Ghost afresh. This Jesus is too beautiful. This Jesus is too beautiful. This Jesus is too glorious. Oh, close your eyes and minister to him. Let him feel you afresh. Let him feel you afresh. Many have gotten weary. This is the place of strength. This is the place of renewal. Minister to the Lord. Go ahead and minister to Him. We are rendering the cows of our lips. We are not filling in the time. No, we are not filling in the time. No, we are not filling in the time. No. We're not just trying to fill in the time. No. 
we are priests that attend to an altar and our first sacrifice after the sacrifice of Jesus are the words of our lips the words of our lips heaven is responding there are transactions happening right now in the realm of the spirit this is not a casual moment there are transactions happening right now in the realm of the spirit this is not a casual moment get full of the Holy Ghost get full of the Holy Ghost please if you are too casual on your seat get up it's time for the hungry it's time for the thirst it's time for the hungry it's time for the thirst get full of the Holy Ghost get full of the Holy Ghost get full of the Holy Ghost
somebody rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. Oh, sing out in the spirit. Oh, sing out in the spirit. Oh, sing out in the spirit. Somebody rejoice in the Lord. Don't look to the left, don't look to the right, no. Don't look to the left, don't look to the right, no. of God rests on you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, Lord. Let it rest on you. Let it rest on you. May we Follow me, 
just follow the chords. May we never lose our wonder. Let every time you approach Jesus be as though it was the first time you ever heard of him. Now sing it as though it was the first time. You are beautiful. You are beautiful in all your Just follow me with all the music, just the keys and the guitar. Let's go. You are beautiful, say. You are beautiful in all your ways. Sing it three more times and let your imaginations begin to be activated. You are beautiful. It, just take a check. just gonna kneel or just sit down or keep standing just you of your understanding be enlightened and see him beautiful say you are don't look to the left or the right keep your eyes on Jesus so beautiful you are beautiful you
at his face, say, I stand. I stand. play a prophetic drum. I need it to tap into the presence of the Lord. Come on.
ministering to the Lord, just solemnly there, everybody praying in the spirit, wherever you are, everybody praying in the spirit, while they keep ministering to the Lord, everybody praying in the spirit where you are, everybody praying in the Holy Spirit, just solemnly there, ministering to the Lord, everybody ministering to the Lord, praying in the Holy Spirit where you are. Everyone praying in the Holy Spirit. Go ahead and pray in the Holy Spirit. Go ahead and pray in the Holy Spirit. Minister to the Lord. Minister to the Lord. Minister to the Lord. Minister to the Lord. Go ahead, minister to the Lord. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Minister to the Lord. This is not the time to close your mouth. Open your mouth and pray. Stir up yourself from that place of slumber. Minister to the Lord. 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 Go ahead and 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 minister to the Lord. Ceremony of Redigo Shkela Akrash Delabani. Yes, yes, there's a freshness. There's a freshness, there's a freshness, there's a freshness, a newness, a newness. As we minister to the Lord, there's a newness, there's a newness. Emra baba kota naga swata kaba baba basha kata kaba ya taka basu keta nama. Meto bro do 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 in the name of Jesus. When we talk about the priesthood and we speak about things, for example, ministering to the Lord like we have done tonight and we will yet do, um, you know, many times it's, it's an unfortunate scenario, situation that many people think this is that uh, 
notice how we start our prayers because that's what they tell you. Open, let's open our mouth and thank the Lord. Many of us think that, oh, the deeper things, the stronger things, the bigger things, you know, is when we are screaming there, pulling down walls and mountains and all the rest. Can I tell you something? The one singular most powerful thing you will engage in is in things like this, ministering to the Lord, the priesthood. I want to show you two scriptures. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 14 and hold your Bibles in your hands. Hold your Bibles in your hands. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 14. I want you to see something there. There are two legs on which the priesthood stands. Worship and intercession. Our focus tonight is worship. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 14. It says, and I want us to read Hebrews 7 verse 14. I want to go, everybody. I want to go. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. No, please wait, wait, wait. wait. We are not done. No. Just keep ministering. You want to sit down on the floor? All of you just sit down. We are together. It says, for it is evident that our Lord sprang out of where? Out of where? It says, of which tribes Moses spake nothing concerning the priesthood. Why did the Lord spring out of Judah, not Levi? Why didn't he follow the Levitical priesthood? It's easy for us to explain, oh, it wasn't Mel I mean, it's Melchizedek, the order of Melchizedek, because Melchizedek, we at least don't know his genealogy. But why Judah? If you want to say, oh, maybe Judah was the perfect one. We know he was not the perfect one. Was he not the one that slept with his daughter-in-law, thinking she was a harlot? So obviously, the Lord, please stay with me so you understand our priesthood, did not spring out of Judah because of the perfection of Judah. Why was Judah the choice? Because in Judah, you see the two legs of the priesthood. First is worship. Second is intercession. Let me start with the second. When they were going to sell Joseph, who interceded? When they were going to kill Joseph, who interceded and preserved the life of Joseph? It was Judah. Judah told his brothers, don't let's kill him. If they had killed Joseph, that prophetic word that God had given Joseph would have found no expression. All his brothers said, well, let's kill him, dip his blood and all dress, and we tell a lie to our father. But Ju Judah stood there as an intercessor, and he said, no, no. Who stood as guarantor to bring Benjamin back? When Jacob said, I can't let Benjamin go. I've lost Joseph. And Joseph said, I want to see Benjamin until you bring Benjamin. Nobody is going to leave this place. No, no foodstuff is coming to you. Who stood as guarantor? It was Judah. Say with me, the intercessor. That's a beautiful story. That's not my focus tonight. We're going to have other sessions where, because a lot of believers have lost the art of intercession. The Bible says that a man planted a vineyard. There was a tree there. And the tree was there for three years. The man came looking for fruit. And when he found no fruit, what did he say? He said, cut it down, for it encumbered the ground. Then comes the husband man. And he says, no, Lord. He says, no, sir, please give it one year more. I will dig around it. I will dung around it. I will pour manure. The tree may not have heard the conversation but an intercessor preserved his life. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? The office of a priest. But let's talk about the worship aspect because it tells us categorically the Lord did not spring out of Levi. He sprang. He didn't say he was born. Are you following what I'm saying here? You studied the Greek word. The Greek word means a forceful ejection, as it were. He sprang out of Judah, of whom Moses spoke nothing. There was nothing priestly about Judah in the Old Testament. Why? When in Genesis 29, Leah, the mother of Judah, was unloved by her husband. The Bible tells us she had her first child. What did she say? Said, well, maybe my husband will love me because of this. I want us to see Genesis 29, 31. I want you to see and see how this happened. When the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. Next verse. 
Leah conceived, bare a son. She called him Reuben. What was the meaning of Reuben? It says, surely the Lord had looked upon my affliction. Now, therefore, my husband will love me. She was using this as a negotiation chip. My husband will love me now that I have a son for him. Look at the next son. She had another child. Because the Lord heard that I was hated, therefore he had given me a son also. She called his name Simeon. Look at the next one there. She had another child, Levi. Said, with this, my husband will be joined unto me because I've given him three sons. No way. He's going to love me. He'll be joined unto me because I've given him three sons. Then she got to Judah. What did she say about Judah? Now I will praise the Lord. I, all of these things happening on the external, have, I don't care. I'm hated, it's okay. The things are not working out fine for me, it's okay. I'm going to keep my guard and my post in the place of praise. And the Bible says, after this, she stopped bearing. After this, she stopped bearing. She lost sight of everything in terms of human capacity, human ability, her advantages and everything. And she turned her face to the Lord. She said, listen, my children are not my strength. My praise is my strength. She got to that point in her life. She got to that point. Can I tell you something? This matter of the priesthood is not a light matter. It's not a joke. That when a man kneels down before the Lord and lifts his hand, and he's there in prayer, worship, just ministering unto the Lord. There's so much that happens in the realm of the Spirit. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? So much that's happening in the realm of the Spirit. So much. And one of the things the Lord said to me, he said, fresh grace. Fresh grace to labor in the secret place. Yes, fresh grace to labor in the secret place. Fresh grace. Our strength is not necessarily in our numbers. I believe in that, but our strength is in our secret place. Fresh grace to labor there, to stay there. Not because you have a message to preach or you have anything to do. Just because you love the Lord. Just because you love the Lord. That's where our strength is. That's where our strength is. You get an evil report. You know how to shut yourself. Lay prostrate before the Lord to minister to the Lord. You get a good report. You know how to shut yourself. Lay prostrate before the Lord and minister to the Lord. If our prayer life is built on petition, it's not a prayer life. Jesus prayed, Reverend Felix, Jesus prayed all night long. The Son of God, the Word made flesh. What was he praying about all night long? What is the need of the Word? What is the need of the word made flesh? At least we have an example of his prayer, John chapter 17. What was his prayer? Worship unto God and intercession for the disciples. He was praying for the disciples. He was worshiping God, communion with God. That's what our prayer life should seem like. That's what it should be. Hallelujah. That's what it should be. Now, you're not going to build a prayer life by wishing it. Nobody prays by learning about prayer. You pray by praying. Nobody prays by, nobody becomes a prayer giant by learning about prayer. You become a giant in the place of prayer by what? Praying. That's the only way it works. Disciplining ourselves, staying there. Even when our body is giving way, staying there in prayer. Hallelujah. Take a prayer posture. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Take a prayer posture and pray in the Holy Ghost. Take a prayer posture and pray in the Holy Ghost. Part of what's going to happen tonight, there's a spirit of grace and supplication that is on my life. I know it. I know it. There's a spirit of grace and supplication that is at work in my life. The Lord told me, He's placing that spirit. He's placing that spirit of grace and supplication. Yes. Take a prayer posture. And begin to pray. You want to walk back and forth. You want to kneel down. Lay prostrate before the Lord. But by all means you're praying. We're making no petition of the Lord. We're just praying in the spirit. Ministering unto the Lord in psalms, hymns and spiritual songs. 
Coranizo sosto fratella bashana veto kamara gigos ke fratella mashanda gabai. There are too many answers awaiting you in the presence of God. Too many situations that you are looking for answers. If only we will tarry. If only we will tarry. If only we will tarry. Too many situations that if we will just tarry in the presence of the Lord, answers will come cheaply. Cheaply. Answers will come cheaply. If only we will tarry. Keep the Lord as your gaze. Keep the Lord as your gaze. The mind needs a focus. The mind always needs a focus, else it will wander. Keep this beautiful Jesus as your gaze. And come on, pray in the Holy Ghost there. We have no confidence in the flesh. We rejoice in Christ Jesus. We worship Him in the Spirit. Come on, go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost there. Go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost. Go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost. My confidence is not that I have Ruben. My confidence is not that I have Levi. No, my confidence is not that I have Simeon. No, my confidence is in my prayer, my worship. My confidence, yes, is in my ministry as a priest. This is where answers are. This is where power lies. Therein lies my confidence. Oh, I want everybody praying. There's a mantle of prayer coming upon you. There's a mantle, a cloak of prayer coming upon you. Grace to tarry in the secret place, to remain there, whether sin or unseen. But therein lies our power, therein lies our strength. Our strength is not in sound bites. Our strength is not in how many conferences, how many meetings. No. Our strength is in waiting. Our strength is in waiting. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Our strength is in waiting. Fresh grace tonight. Fresh grace tonight. We are going to pray till you cross a threshold. There's a threshold you are going to cross tonight. It's called the breaking of the flesh. The breaking of the flesh for the release of the spirit. The breaking of the outer man for the release of the spirit. Some of you are being born on the wings of the spirit. You are being born on the wings of the spirit. You can tell. You can tell. Grace is being supplied. Grace is being supplied. This is not something that will end in this meeting. No, 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 no. It's going with you to your room. It's going with you to your closet. You will wake up 2 a.m. in the middle of the night. Oh, yes. Just tarrying, 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 tarrying. Not a need, not a want. Not a need, not a want. Oh, yes. My husband does not love me yet. But this is my confidence, my praise. I'm turning my eyes away from all the petitions, the needs, and the wants. Oh, pastors, if we were tarry. Ministers, if we will tarry a little longer, if we will tarry a little longer, where you tarry determines what you carry. Where you tarry determines what you carry. Where you tarry determines what you carry. How long you tarry determines what you carry. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. I attend the Tola Mahaya. Come on, let's go a gear higher. Let's switch it up a notch higher. From deep within. Find it deep inside your heart. Find that place deep inside your heart. Find that place deep in your heart. You're getting tired. Change your posture. Change your posture. You're getting tired. Change your posture. You're getting tired. Change your posture. Somebody needs to rise up. Somebody needs to walk around. Eroto no vele kushta la pande azeisla atenangos le rute ne 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 ko barada bashanda. We are the circumcision who worship Jesus in the spirit. We have no confidence in the flesh. Our confidence is not in our preaching ability. Our confidence is not in our singing ability. It's not in our beauty. No, 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 no. Our confidence is in our priestly office. That's where our confidence is. That's where it lies. It's not in advertisement. It's not in promotion. It's in the secret place. 
That's where our confidence lies. Karute ne vetonde barati ko payate eshanamande. And your Father that see it in the secret will reward you in the open. As we pray tonight, there's a spirit of grace. There's a spirit of supplication that's resting upon this house. There's a spirit of grace. There's a spirit of supplication. Eratela bakosha katakataya atanange. Some of you know years ago how long you were tarry in the secret place uh, there's a quickening tonight uh, there's a quickening tonight uh, there's a quickening tonight uh, the tabernacle of David is being set up uh, the tabernacle of David is being set up uh, the tabernacle of David is being yes, set yes, up yes. Uh, if you need someone to help you hold somebody by the hand uh, and help them help them help them help somebody hold them by the hand uh, and stir up a fire uh, Meratana, Meratana Kataka, Kalakata Kata, Lakata Kata Kata, Mashakata Kata, Ekrata Kata Kata Kata, Rokoto Koto Koto Koto. We are going to break into something tonight. We are breaking out of a level. We are breaking out of a realm. There's a realm you have operated in the realm of the spirit. You are breaking out. You are breaking out. Errata Labosha, fresh oil, fresh grace. To tarry in the secret place. Our answers are awaiting us in the presence of God. Our answers are awaiting us in the presence of God. Our answers are awaiting us in the presence of God. Our answers are awaiting us in the presence of God. Our answers are awaiting us in the presence of God. Our answers are awaiting us in the presence of God. Our answers are awaiting us in the presence of God. Our answers are awaiting us in the presence of God. Our answers are awaiting us in the presence of God. Our answers are awaiting us in the presence of God. Upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Aratella Kosaketa Labaya, Rabala Bashanda. There are certain tendencies that are taking a hold of you. But as we stir up the fire tonight, Ratella Bokosha Katakataya, those flies cannot perch. Aparo, 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 Shanana, Shanana, Shanana. Makla kata kata kata, rakata kata, opratate, eprebebe, arata labaya. The ministry of a priest requires time. It requires time. We can rush through it. We can rush through it. We can rush through it. We don't believe that we receive. No, 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 no. In the ministry of the priest, we tarry, we tarry till we carry. We tarry till we carry. We tarry till we carry. Arebeto, Shondofonte, etende. Etenekete, 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 etenekete. Jesus sprang up out of Judah. Jesus sprang up out of praise. Jesus sprang up out of worship. Eratana, ragadagada, ragadagadagada, ragadagada. Manta kata kata, shakata kata, ragadagada. Mero, asta, 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 ara, ega, eba, elo, osha, ete, eme, ora manana. Legese gede gede, raba baba. Maroto no no, 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 maroto no no. Meko sekete ekrate ekratada ekratala araba beshene baruata nanta dakata kata kata shada dada elaba baba. We are the priest of the Lord. We are the priest of the Most High God. Alabaya render the cows of your lips ebrebelo kushakata rakoto lobo ombroto koto e e e o so 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 o rada meso oro shanamante arakatola meso koto ombrekete oro montoko monto rododobo borodogo shakata eza zadatanana zadadadada Shagadagada, Obre Bemano, Obre Bemano, Obre Bemano, O Shoto Cotta, Le Curamante, Messus de Prede, Le Cronso de Monta, Ratatata, 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 Esselemento Rodaba Daba 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 
Regotonomosha, Eclans to Brodo, Regetalomo, Rotono, Regeto, Ragataka, Baruatakata, Shakatanemo, On Stokora, On Stokora, On Sotene, Eshana, Aratanangoto, Rostoda Conte, Mastala Canta, Aratangas Catala, Eshtalaba Tecabrede, Ratele Bocoto, Ratele Bocoto, Regetelecate, Embregetecate, Rapalo, O Soto, O Soto. Mokrotolobo, Borokotoloko, Rokotolokoto, 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 Reketelekete, Ebregetekete, Reketelekotolobokosha, Aratele Menda Bredede, Retedede, and Sotododa, Shagadagadagada, somebody pray, Otoradadada. Mesokoto koto, roto koto koto, ankle kete kete, rakoto lo koto, onto lo koto koto koto, shagata kata kata, ekra kata kata kata, arata kata kata, mekra kete kete, okro koto koto, rosha kata kata kaya. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, watchman ni calls it the breaking of the outward man for the release of the spirit that's what happens when we tarry the breaking of the outward man wisdom is inside rivers of living water is inside power is inside when we tarry what happens is the breaking of the outer man for the release of the spirit i would to god that we can believe we receive it no we can't the priestly ministry requires time and discipline I heard Pastor David Ubeyeme say this. They were in Bible school with Bishop David Edebo, the only one year Bible school, they ran 1995. He said on a Saturday morning, the bishop came and he said, today we are teaching about prayer. He said, let me teach you to pray. He said, everybody rise up, let's pray. And from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., he said he was on the same spot. He said the bishop's trousers were drenched with sweat. When he was done at 3 p.m., he turned to them. He said, that's prayer. That's your lecture on prayer. That's your lecture on prayer. Listen, the only way to stand as a priest is to stand as one. No matter the readings, no matter the books, no matter anything. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Why is it that there's so much knowledge, there's so much exposure, yet very little manifestation? Because not many people are paying the price in the secret. Any king that you see standing, there is an altar and a priesthood behind him. It is only believers who want to stand as kings without having the foundation of the priesthood. Let me read you something powerful, Zechariah. We are still praying. The book of Zechariah chapter 6. And hear this, there is a shifting happening in the realm of the spirit. Many of you are going to return back home and there will be a release, a release. You will find yourself literally just gliding on the wings of the Spirit. Why? It's called the Spirit of Grace and Supplication. The Spirit of Grace and Supplication. Zechariah chapter 6 verse 9. Please stay with me in this reading. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Take of them of the captivity, even of Heldiah, of Tobijah, of Jediah, which are come from Babylon, and come thou the same day, Go into the house of Josiah, the son of Zephaniah. Then take silver and gold and make crowns. What did he tell them to do? Take silver, take gold. What were they to do? Make crowns. Set them upon the head of Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest. My God. My God. My God. The day has come where he says, the crown. You know, in those days, the king wore the crown. But prophetically he's saying the time is coming, those who will wear the crown must first be priests. He was pointing to the day and the time of the church so that you see this clearly. Look at the next thing he says. And speak unto them saying, Thus speak the Lord of hosts saying, Behold the man whose name is the brand, that's Jesus, and he shall grow up out of his place. He shall build the temple of the Lord. Even he shall build the temple of the Lord. He shall bear the glory. Come on now. And shall sit and rule upon his throne. With a loud voice, read the next sentence. One to go. He shall be a priest upon his throne. Not a king upon his throne. Mm. 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 
Who are those who sit on thrones? Who are those who wear crowns in this dispensation? Priests. In the dispensation and the day of the church, to sit on the throne, to wear the crown, you must be a priest. Or else you are going to just be a lot of noise without substance. Is somebody listen to what I'm saying here? Yes, he didn't say a king who shall be a priest. No. No. He said a priest who shall what? Sit upon his throne and the council of peace shall be between them. Between the kingly office and the priestly office. So we are going to see men. Moses, mark my word, Minister Moses. We are going to see men who will spend 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. there heavy in the spirit. And by the time they get to work, they are still the boardroom members who are dictating things in the boardroom. The council of peace. We are going to see the wealthiest people being the most prayerful. The council of peace. I'm telling you what I know by the spirit. We are going to see leaders and owners of conglomerates who when you go into their house, you'll be shocked at their practices. Dangerous practices in the depth of the night. Who can fly a private jet and enjoy their life, but they're on their knees taking nations for God, on their knees laboring before God. Gone are the days where they say he's a prayer warrior, that's why he's poor. Say with me the council of peace. I want you to read that sentence again. He shall be a priest upon his throne. Now say this with me. I am a priest upon my throne. Come on now. Do you see that? Who are those who are permitted to sit on thrones in this kingdom? Priests. priests. <laughs> it's only priests that are permitted to sit on thrones in this kingdom. Only priests. And I told you that the priestly ministry stands on two legs. The place of worship where we minister to the Lord and the place of intercession where we effect the will of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is moving here tonight. The Spirit of the Lord is moving here tonight. I said the Spirit of the Lord is moving here tonight. There's a river flowing here tonight. We are being established on a pedestal we will never recover from. There's a steering that you will never recover from that is happening tonight. The Spirit of the Lord is moving here tonight. The Spirit of the Lord is doing something here tonight. Come on, open your mouth and pray in the Spirit. 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 Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. He shall be a priest upon his throne. 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 Parwatananga skela angra digo soto frotela legonte ke ba shaila ki atananga ske prememento va me 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 brando vetele kosko fratele boko shade brande gete 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 shena monto brande digo so brande de 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 bosa regete gete 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 Aratene vote ne ke swata nanka tele bahe. Jiga daga 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 brada daga soto preke tele mahaya. Come on, pray in the Holy Spirit where you are. 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 Shero monto frodo lo boko skati la anko bara daga da. Sera mante frede ke tele mongo skela angre digos horadi. You reign, you ancient science king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you 
a mighty on your throne. You reign, you ancient science. King. Sing it out. You a mighty on your throne. You reign, sing it out, sing.
sing it out. tonight it's not a cliche the word kindle is not a cliche we have been kindled tonight brothers and sisters don't forget what you have received tonight the spirit of grace and supplication it wasn't mere words that God's servant spoke this evening you have received the spirit of grace and supplication when you get home what do you do you pray you pray hallelujah God bless you. You can have your seats. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I'm a priest. Come on, I'm a priest. And don't forget, it's not just by confession. It's not I believe, I receive. Praise God. You're a priest because you're going to pray. Hallelujah. And you're going to minister to the Lord. So it doesn't end here, okay? It doesn't end here. When you get home, you continue. Praise the Lord. It's time to give our offerings. Hallelujah. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8 says, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work. Praise God. Shall we rise up to pray? Shall we rise up? Let us rise. Let us rise. We're going to be giving our offerings now. Hallelujah. Say what a prayer over your offering. Say what a prayer over your sacrifice. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord for the privilege of giving. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for you would make all grace abound toward us. We enjoy your sufficiency and we are bound unto every good work in Jesus' name. Amen. You can cast your seed and you can have your seeds. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Do listen to the following announcements. Join our daily watch, our, no, not the watchman prayer, our watchtower, watchtower with God's servant, Pastor Ayo Ejeni, April the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Hallelujah. April 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, watchtower. The time is 11 p.m. West African time. We are going to be framing the month of April. We spend time online praying with God's servant. Hallelujah. And it's exclusively virtual on YouTube at official Ayo Ajani. I said it's on YouTube at official Ayo Ajani and on Mixlr at Petra Christian Center. YouTube official at official Ayo Ajani and Mixlr at Petra Christian Center. If you're in the city of Accra, join us for Total Immersion Accra with God's servant, Pastor Ayo Ajani. It's going to be a total immersion in the Word and the Spirit. And the date is 5th and 6th of April and the time is 5 p.m. GMT. The venue is Redemption House, East Legon, Sasso Street, Accra, Ghana. Hallelujah. And on Sunday, come on, on Sunday we have... A miracle service with God's servant. Hallelujah. Oh, it's going to be an avalanche of miracles in this house on Sunday. Brothers and sisters, bring the sick. Just bring them. 
in droves. Hallelujah. But it's not just healings. God's servant told us it's miracles and healings. So there will be different kinds of miracles here on Sunday. Praise God. So don't come alone on Sunday. Come with someone. Praise God. Glory to God. It's time to close the service. Shall we rise up to close the service? Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, thank the Lord for a great service. Thank the Lord for a great service. Oh, Father, we thank you. Oh, we've had a great time tonight. We've had a great time tonight. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. We've been kindled tonight. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. See you on Sunday at the Easter Miracle Service, 9 a.m. here on Sunday. God bless you. Have a wonderful night.